The Coalition for Human Rights Monitoring Groups in Nigeria has refuted speculations that the Nigerian military recruited repentant Boko Haram terrorists into its ranks. It made the disclosure in a special report signed by Helen Adeshina and Beatrice Ozea Damut after an investigation of the military's recruitment process since 2015. The group explained that about 250 repentant Boko Haram fighters enrolled for the federal government de-radicalization program and were reabsorbed into their communities and not the Nigerian military. It further disclosed that 30 of the repentant Boko Haram fighters were fully engaged in religious activities aimed at discouraging youths from going into crime and terrorist activities. According to the group, the military's recruitment process is transparent and devoid of interference from any quarters, and as such, there is no room for former Boko Haram members. The groups, however, urged the military to begin the process of informing members of the public of its recruitment process. Joining us now by phone is a security expert, Ambassador Roy Okidieve. Good afternoon, Ambassador, and thank you for joining us. Yeah, good afternoon. Southern an opportunity. Now, according to the Coalition of, for Human Rights Monitoring Groups in Nigeria, about 250 repentant Boko Haram fighters enrolled for federal government the de-radicalization program and were reabsorbed into the, their communities. Is this a step in the right direction, Ambassador? Well, um, if you look at the direction of the human rights, human rights are rights that are used for people that are as called as humans. We cannot call the Boko Haram fighters human beings. What they are doing, they are bastardly acts, they are, um, they are activities against normal human existence has already taken them away from any benefit for human rights. Then let us go beyond that. Look at Ghana, for an example. The country itself has a right to stand on penalty that they want to give for certain offenses against their citizens. It has been said in Ghana that don't carry your cows to anywhere not at any civil to you. Now, if you look at the human rights angle that we are taking now in Nigeria, it cannot fly because these are people that don't even recognize the human rights government of the world. They said they are against Western education. They are against everything Western. It's human rights, not Western. It's Western. In Africa, yeah, we are used to jungle justice. So human rights is Western. If you, if you look at the trickling effect, sir, let's look at the soldiers, their morale. I have a lot of friends that were in the army together. So they, they are in tears because these are people that smoke life of citizens they were protecting. They took the lives of fellow soldiers and the way they commit their revenge and their killings is so barbaric. So I don't think it is right okay, for them for to, to give these people any form of amnesty. Okay. Now, Ambassador, how do we ensure that this move does not potentially jeopardize the security of the people and community? How do we ensure that? That, that, is, a, that, that is a very challenging hope right now. Because if you look at the, the chief of staffs that have overstayed their tenure, you will understand that the normal system of military engagement has been compromised. Because if that normal system of military engagement still exists, some of these people that were caught in combat zones, they would have faced pure penalties, judicial allocation of judgment, and they will be executed. So once you now have these people overstaying their tenure, who do you think will be able to push for execution of these people? Are they the ones that initiated this? Will they be able to stand firm to say this suggestion, this move for their human rights, for their um, radicalization must not follow? They cannot see it through. So I am afraid to have hope that we will succeed in this fight, especially with this. I hope you just heard 
that there is disgruntlement in the Ifua camp, in the Boko Haram camp. Some commanders have been rumored now to have been killed because they refused to go barbaric. Now that means we will have more barbaric attacks. And this is not going to over well. Okay. Now, Ambassador, let, let's move away a bit from the repentant Boko Haram. There's been some arguments in some quarters that question why there is more focus on ex Boko Haram members and a seeming neglect of military personnel. Now, in your own opinion, what is the welfare of the military like at the moment? The, the welfare of the military is 100% intact on paper. The welfare of the military is 100% intact on the media platforms. If you go to reality as we speak, a lot of those allocations, a lot of those proclamations, a lot of those statements by government representatives and all the chiefs of staff, it's not in reality a practicable experience for the fighting troops. As I speak to you, so many soldiers are looking at the veterans. So many soldiers are looking at the ones that have been sick or fallen in attacks with bullet wounds. And the real kind of treatment that they expect is not being given. And if you look the last army day, did you not see where army officers were giving one Indomie carton, one gallon of Ganot oil for widows of fallen heroes? Is that a palatable action when we are talking about the children that are dropped out of school? When we are talking of the wife that is doing series of travel to Abuja to secure the payment of her husband's um, and the entitlement as a fallen hero. So we should leave paper, we should leave the media, we should go practical. I employ Plus TV Africa and every other TV platform to go and look for these widows and interview them physically, look for these soldiers that were injured during battle, interview them physically, and you will begin to take statistics of where we are. It's oh. very great. All right, Ambassador Roy, he Security Expert, thank you very much for joining us and for your contribution. Thank you very much.